Welcome to the diet zone. <laughs> Losing weight is really different, isn't it? You thought it was simple. Well, it's not. <laughs> to lose 200 pounds plus sort of thing you know it's like losing another in I am losing another individual so uh, it's a long chore you know somebody who loses 20 pounds feels that they have made a great accomplishment I lose 20 pounds and I say only 180 left you know <laughs> gosh I'll be there in no time okay I, I have something to say I, I've been guilty of this offense for years. I, I, I just want to say that from now on, wait, wait, don't go. I, I am not going to eat beef anymore. Wait, I promise. Don't, just listen to me. It's the promise. Hey, I'm not lying. I'm not going to eat beef anymore. Hey. I'm a fat man, and I hate myself for it. I'm 40 years old, and I weigh 400 pounds. And I can't really remember the last time I was happy. I want to change, and dieting is the only way I know how. It's kind of high, Rick. I'd like to have a look inside your eye. Inside my eye? Yeah, inside your eye. Just take the glasses off for me. Okay. How high is it? 160 and 112. Wow. Yeah, just look straight ahead. That's a pretty high degree of blood pressure there and uh, has to be watched closely. I recommend also that, uh, uh, you know, a cardiogram be done at least on your record, make sure that everything's okay there uh, in that regard, because that's a pretty big stress on your heart. Okay, just relax, Rick. for me, just so I can get your scapula to stick out a bit here. Great. Arm relaxed. I can't relax my arm. You're pinching the fat in my back. <laughs> I know. I tell people to relax, and then yeah. I pinch them. Yeah. Best you can. This is not a good way to gain trust. Okay. Hope you don't <laughs> mind me hugging you. <laughs> We're getting so close. <laughs> I said I had to get to know you over this test, <laughs> You never know, I'll get to like this. Eh? We do the thing with the tape again? <laughs> I know how my weight looks to other people. It's a turnoff. I just can't connect. I've been on some form of diet since I was 12. There have been thousands of different pills and powders since then, and even a few liquid diets. I started out, I think, with amphetamines when I was really young because my doctor at that time, I guess the thinking was a speedy metabolism would do the trick. You want to put me in the hospital? You want to operate on me? Whatever anyone can do to get this weight off, you know, I say just do it. You know, give me the ticket that says, hey, you can now go anywhere you want to go and do whatever you want and there would be no stigma attached.
if I could say, you know, meet God and say, I'll give you three years of my life, just make me thin, I'd do it. I wouldn't be lying if I said I was lonely for a good part of my life. I can't hide being fat and there are days when I stay in my apartment. I, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to see anybody. It's like my life is on hold until I lose this weight. But it hasn't always been this way. As a kid, I grew up in a very loving family. I grew up in an ethnic neighborhood where food was a part of our identity. I remember my dad coming home from the railroad yards with my uncle, and they would stop at the bakery and pick up fresh pumpernickel and rye bread and fresh hot kubasa. My mom would have prepared holub chi and pedahe and fried sauerkraut. Our house was just filled with the smells of good food. For my brother Len and I, those were some of the best memories of our childhood. You were, you were nine years older than me, right? And I, I, don't, I don't recall. Were you a fat kid? I don't remember if you were fat. Yeah, no, I was fat. Yeah? yeah. When did you, when, when did? I, when I discovered girls, that's when I, I lost weight. Yeah. <laughs> did you, were you being teased and harassed as a, as a kid? Oh, yeah. You always get bugged about your weight. And, yeah. Well, we take all our frustrations out on food. When I'm happy, I eat. When I'm sad, I eat. You always get something to eat? Yeah, what do you want, mate? It's Leonard. He enculturated us to hold dead fish. What do you do? What, what is it? What's the, key, what's the key to family life, Len? Bring fish home. Hold it. And hold the fish in the in living room. In the living room. Oh, God, this poor fish sitting there being thrown over. Here's Rick. Oh, here's Rick. Oh, yeah. Cool dude. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, is that Cigarette, jig, fish, yeah? jig. Yeah. Like a real man, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> my being fat was really a reflection of my parents' love for me. When I went to school, I got a real different message. Suddenly, I was being called names like fatso and fat pig. I learned then that being fat was connected with everything negative and it meant that you were stupid and you were lazy and didn't have any self-control and it just resulted in a lot of teasing. So I guess to cope I played the clown and that way I seemed to somehow be able to control the laughter. There was a very weird woman that lived next to us when I was a young kid. Uh, I can't remember. The guy was belonged to the hall, but his wife was very strange. I remember once she always used to say, "Come on for cookies," and all this. Oh yeah, I don't oh. remember the name. I and I went in the her. house once, and I and I and she started this thing, and it was, "Do you know about death?" And I was I was young. I remember. And she gave me, I'll tell you about it. There's a string inside your body, and <laughs> it stretches every day, and then it goes, and you die. And I was, I remember, like, oh, you know, I didn't want to move. I, you know, because you're a kid, you know. Yeah, but you're telling the truth, right? Yeah, well, there's a rope inside me, I hope. <laughs> I wonder I'm eating. I'm probably scared to death. My string's going to snap. <laughs> I got married very young. 
And in my attempts to lose weight, I lost my marriage. But it did give me the gift of my daughter, Carrie. She's the one steady relationship in my life. Come here, swing. Quick one. All right, don't put your ass out so much. You look like Elvis. <laughs> I mean, we're all sexual people. I, I, I feel, I don't feel that I'm not sexual, you know. Um, I think I have uh, uh, maybe put those, those, uh, those feelings or desires um, in a back room um, because I, 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 of, I often feel it's a futile effort on my part. I know I would enjoy being involved in a in a in a in a intimate relationship with with a, a woman. Um, whether that's going to happen or not, I don't know. You know I think my chances of that happening, uh, when I'm more physically appealing, will certainly heighten. Um, but I don't think it's a possibility at this time. into your training zone now, um, according to the exercise intensity guide. How's it feel, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to be bringing your heart rate up to around 153 beats per minute. We don't want to take it higher than that. Yeah. You should be able to feel when I you're feel working it. hard yeah. enough. And when you're in a sweat, when your respiration's getting a little faster, when your legs are feeling it, you know you're working hard enough, okay? Legs gonna be able to hold out, Rick. You're doing great. Just three minutes to go. Some of the most important people in my life right now, I'd have to say are the abused kids that I work with. And music has helped me to make a connection with them. There's a magic about music that seems to work for kids. Kids like Eric. I was speaking to your mom the other day. My real mom? Yeah, your real mom. <laughs> and um, I guess there's a couple of things I have to tell you. Would you be upset if your dad uh, moved away from your mom? Yes, really upset. Why? Because he'll keep on playing that game over and over again. Which game is that? Coming back and leaving, coming back and leaving, coming back and leaving. Mm, that's a pretty hurtful thing, eh? You know, your dad, I think, um, has, has, has moved out again and has gone, uh, I think he's gone back to Hamilton, okay? So I think you were a little worried about when he was uh, staying at, at your mom's mm -hmm. place, were you? What were you worried about? My dad beating up my mother again. Okay. Well, you know, I, I phoned your mom and I let her know that if anything ever happened, or if she even thought anything was going to happen, that she was to call me. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm trying to, to, um, uh, to do an audio tape for Eric to begin to alleviate some of his fears. So, 
um, to to sort of have him psychologically riveted to this <laughs> to this tape uh, and to use terms and phrases and you know to stay within what is his sort of familiar network. Okay, what matches the word cool? Awesome. Awesome. And what is awesome? What kinds of things would be awesome? Heavy metal. Heavy metal is what? Awesome. Yeah. Do you have? Do you know any? Like, who is your? Who's your heavy metal group? Let I me like, guess. I like Poison. Poison. Mm -hmm. What kind of stuff do they sing? Number one bad boy and look what the cat dragged in. That's the song I have. Yeah. Tape, and it's really awesome. Yeah. Is it like really awesome? Mm hmm Like oh. not just really awesome. Totally awesome. Oh wow, well, well, that's powerful. The yeah. other thing is that I'm gonna be doing a song for you. Do you want it to be heavy? Really heavy. Like heavy metal? Totally heavy. Totally heavy? Like no. loud guitars and mm -hmm. electric guitar all the time. Mm -hmm. And drums. So you want electric guitar. I better mark that down. Okay. Uh, let's see. Eric wants electric guitar. Okay. You want drums? Drums. Okay. Uh, how about some bass guitar? Bass guitar. Okay. I never know how you're supposed to breathe. I think I'm doing it backwards. Throw it on the push. Oh, your face is so ugly. I don't want to just. This is cruel and unusual punishment. Yeah, it's no picnic for me. Let's oh. go. <laughs> My arms are burning. That's what's supposed to happen, right? I think so. Yeah. I could do this by the stove and get the same effect. <clears throat> Don't push. Just tell me if I'm a well balanced you're, individual. Yes, right. I think you're very well balanced. Okay, we've got your weight. Three hundred. So I'm three hundred and seventy pounds. pounds. Just another 220 pounds and I'll be prime weight. It's taken me six months and I've lost 30 pounds. And that's a lot when I think about it, but I'd kind of hoped I'd feel different, that I'd feel better about myself. And I don't. People ask me, you know, how am I doing? And it just seems that all they're concerned about is my weight. How's the diet going? And uh, hey, how many pounds have you lost? Uh, nobody seems to want to know how I'm feeling. Well, I'm losing weight, all right, but I'm not happy. What 
types of things do you attribute to their success? Determination. Right now, the biggest albatross around your neck is your weight, okay? The best way to make yourself feel better about yourself is to achieve some positive endpoints. That is to lose weight so that your blood pressure improves, so that you look better, so that you can come off, so if you have blood sugar abnormalities, so they get better. So you feel better about yourself, so you got mastery. Say, I can control this, I really can. The people who succeed are determined. They're fed up, they're not gonna take it anymore. They are willing to change their lives around entirely mm -hmm. on a dime. Do a 180. And those are the people who are successful. I have tried to uh muster a, a, an energy about it and, and this time I'm going to do it and, and I've given myself all the reasons for it and yet I've, I've fallen short. And so you're saying that I wasn't, I wasn't ready or well, I wasn't? No, well, uh, what I'm saying is, is well, my advice to you would be is try not to muster the energy. My advice would be just do it. Just do it. Don't think about it. Just do it. I can't do this anymore, and I'm, I'm tired of believing that I can. I try, and I'm told that I don't try hard enough, or uh, you know, I'm trying too hard. And in the end, I, I just, I'm, I'm like, I'm hating myself even more. I feel like I'm trapped in my own body, and there's no way out for me. You know, there's nowhere to go. Publicly, I'm okay, but uh, I, I just seem to have these very dark times that are, that are very uh, depressing. I feel like I'm on parole all the time, or, or that I've done something wrong, and I really haven't, you know? Um, so it's affecting me, you know? That's all I can say. I, I, I try and do these things, and, and uh, you know, I go to sleep at night, or I stay, I stay at home at night, and I review certain things and I just I just don't feel I'm not a very happy person at this point. The funny thing is it really doesn't hurt anybody, you know. My being overweight has no effect on you whatsoever, you know. Like you don't catch a disease, <laughs> nobody gets hurt, you know. I, I don't do any damage to anybody, you know. Uh, yet everybody feels so free to want to, uh, you know, uh, contribute to this to this sickness or something almost as if a piece of society's scenery isn't looking right. Yeah. So they, they want to... That's not a bad term, yeah. They want to uh, shape you up so that you fit into the image. Do you want to be uh, what these folks want you to be? Or do you want to be an image that you want you to be? Now, even as I ask you that in this session here, I'm not sure that you give me a clear image of who it is that you want to be. In fact, I, I am sure that I haven't heard from you. Um, how you want to look, how you want to be, what would make you feel ideally comfortable with you? I don't know. I, I you know, I don't know who I am. Uh, I really think that, that that's a part of me that's really I've never really seen myself.
want a cough. What kind of cough? Give me a cappuccino. Uh, want chocolate? Uh, yeah, but the diet chocolate. Diet chocolate? Oh, the D stickers are. Okay. Put it on my chair. Your cap. You better check. Credits. Credits back. My credit check. You're on the blacklist. Look at this. Old size, 38. Nutra size, 33. They're saying that that the 38 size waist is like gross or it needs to be changed and, and you should get into this 33. I would I would do cartwheels if I had a 38 inch waist. Like now, I'm looking at the, at what the media is saying in many ways, and it's it's like what I want to become is not even acceptable. I've always been good at at uh, helping other people um, get their lives together, but now I realize, and you know, maybe for the first time that I've got to do this for myself. Because each chorus is going to be a little bit different. Um, basically, just telling them the same message in a number of different ways about, it's up to you. Oh, yeah, it's up to you. Right. Um, you can choose to live in fear and darkness. But is that really something you want to do? Now it's up to you. You want to take it from the top of that second verse, then? Okay, I'll take it from the uh, top of the chorus. Yeah, okay. Here we go. Fool and the people in the know say you're the one. Now you're fast and you're lean. You can run like a machine, just like you are powered by the sun. But it's up to you. Yes, it's up to you. You know nobody's fool, and I know that you can really feel the truth. Hey, it's up to you. Take your power, Eric. Take it now. Now the very first time that I met you, Eric, it became very clear to me. You were the boy and you had the power. The time had come to set your mind free. Free from the fears that you believed in for years. The fears that kept you in the shadows of the dark. Now, Eric, hear what I say, because there's a choice to be made, which is going to set you and fear so far apart. And it's up to you. Yes, it's up to you. Hi, uh, could I speak to Dr. Mo Lerner, please? Yes. Dr. Lerner. Hi, my name is Rick Zakowicz. I'm, uh, this is sort of a strange request, but uh, I saw you when I was in uh, Seven Oaks Hospital a little while ago. And, uh, uh, how do I start saying this? I, I'm starting a support group or a group for for uh, men that are, I don't know, obese, fat, whatever term you're you're okay with. I'm trying to get a, a group together with people who have similar kinds of concerns, and uh, it seems that uh, you're in my league or I'm in your league, and I, I was wondering if you'd be interested in something like that. How you doing? I'm Dr. Lerner. Hi. 
Did you hurt yourself? Yeah, I did. Okay, one will fix up your finger for you. This happened to work? Yes, it did. Okay. So you've never had stitches before? No. Okay, it's not a big deal. It really isn't. It's just a little bit of stinging at first. So you like the kind of work you do? Oh, it's not bad. What would you rather be doing? Let's see the finger. Just gonna put a little bit of freezing here and here on either side of your finger, okay? okay. I'll just pinch a little bit at first. What would you rather be doing? Oh, I don't know. Not sure? Not sure. Okay, here comes that little bit of a poke. There, it feels like a little balloon there on that side. You did good, I'm gonna do the other side now. You turn your hand over in this way a bit. That's good. You did good. You thought you were gonna scream, didn't you? I thought so, yeah. Oh, that's not as bad as that. The people I work with every day, uh, some of them have despised me from the day they've met me just because of my size, based on nothing else. And uh, I still feel that. There's no person like, like me alive that wouldn't want to in, live a wonderful life with neat relationships and children and, and uh, laughing and being physically active. I used to until a hundred pounds ago, I loved volleyball and swimming. I even played tennis. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of the day that I won't be able to walk anymore. I do this so that... so that we... Some, some way to take care of me. Because <laughs> I've seen it in other obese people. And uh, that's why I put up with this nonsense. People who were nasty and cruel. And that's why I feel so deeply for people in a similar situation. They don't have the opportunities I've had and they envy me, and they think it's so wonderful. You have, you're on the radio, and you're a, you're a doctor. Look at the accomplishment. It's no accomplishment. It's not living. Isn't the purpose of this? That we <coughs> share I know, these but we things. can tolerate a lot. Okay, I think what happens is we is, is we have a hard time with rejection, and I mean we we can you tolerate to a certain degree, but that's really the key is we're rejected. We're not, you know, uh, this group that, I mean, right now, this group is you and me. Me and but you, there's, there's many, many and that's more. And that's it. And hopefully we can reach the other people that are out there, not because I have this great, you know, cape that I want to wear and be somebody's savior, but I think there is strength within us. And, and if we can is. reach out and yeah. bring some of us there that have been isolated, you know, yeah. Then there's, there's, definitely there's an enormous in, amount of power. There. There's definitely strength in that, and, and there's, there's so much more to share. But beyond that, even, there is this need to be needed, and this, you know, we love to be loved, but we hate to be hated. The sensitivity, you just mentioned that, and it's so important that we share this. When you're a kid, you're humiliated, mm -hmm. you're the fat guy, you're fatso, you're picked last on the team, you're put in goal so that your girth can stop shots. And that is the breeding ground. Yeah. And you work with children. The breeding ground is your sensitivity gets higher, get, gets heightened. You're more sensitive to these insults, not less sensitive. You're not yeah. desensitized. But your self-esteem goes down well, even further. It so. gets worse and worse as years go by. And people think fat people are used to this. They're being the jolly fat no, guy. You know, we don't mind making I can't, fun of them. I can't take it anymore. That, that's what's happening with me. I like, see. So I've, I, you know, it's not that I'm going to be psychotic and kill somebody, but I found myself becoming a more and more isolated person. And I don't want to do that. I want to go out. I want to connect. And, and, and I don't want to get those, those jabs and those stabs. So it, it, let me it, ask you a question. You and I are sitting talking here now. Do you not feel somewhat of a release, just the fact that we're sharing these oh, things? Of course. Don't of course. you feel like I have for years that you... You feel better by virtue of the fact that you're not alone. There is this conference. It's in Virginia. I'm going to be participating there. 
it might be something that you might be interested in. I think that it would you meet a lot of interesting people in a different angle. I guess first I have to say that as a fat woman, I find it really terrifying to be in a room of therapists because some of my worst memories, my childhood, and my adolescence were you people, <laughs> therapists and dietitians. So I've been very emotional today. And part of the emotion is where the hell were you 20 and 30 years ago <laughs> and when I was begging people to listen to me about this. Mm -hmm. And I'm real glad you're here now. Around the family issues on a personal level, the way that I find out with my family was rage. I find rage very effective. And I encourage a lot of people to express it. You know, the worst that can happen is your family doesn't talk to you again, and you don't like them anyway, probably. <laughs> that will solve the problem for a while. And then you can come back later and deal with it. I told my family, this is the deal. I'm coming to Thanksgiving dinner. The first person who says anything about my size looks at me funny. I'm slamming the chair on the table, and I'm leaving. And I'm never coming back. And that's the last I ever heard any disparaging remarks. Because I came with a real angry look, and I really meant it. And, and it was the most freeing experience I ever had. And I think that we don't encourage enough rage in fat people. I mean, when we look at the success and failure rates of dieting, there shouldn't be an unbroken window left in any diet clinic. <laughs> It was just considered a complete oddity. I mean, uh, uh, people who would defend the rights of, let's say, blacks or women or the elderly or the disabled would say, yeah, but, uh, hey, uh, fat is a, an exception, you know? Uh, you can do something about that. You have, all you need is a little willpower. Yeah. You're out of control. And all these kinds of stereotypes that we know today really don't apply to most fat people. I say, we, we know. I mean, the people who study it know. Unfortunately, the, the public still believes the stereotypes that fat people are out of control and they're, they're weak-willed and poorly disciplined. And if we didn't want to be fat, we, we should do something about it, is that it? Well, sure. The point is, if you could do something about it, most fat people would have done something about it successfully long ago. The truth is that, you know, people in this country have been dieting for, uh, in fact, in North America, have been dieting for... Um, Decades, and uh, you know they're they're larger than ever. The average weights are going up. And a young woman who was the younger sister of a friend, and this young woman was a senior in high school, and was very lovely and looked much like Linda Carter in Wonder Woman, but very very large. And so I, I sat down to her and said, "Well, you know, I'm I'm, the, I'm ignorant. I I don't know what your experience is like. So help me understand. I want to know." what's like being fat. I have no idea what that even means. And she said, you know, sure. And, and I said to her, what is, once as Danny said, what is your worst experience? What is the thing that bothers you the most about being fat? And she immediately replied, which is now the title of a book, when people tell me I have a pretty face. Mm -hmm. But she didn't stop there. That would have caught my attention because I, I immediately realized, my God, I could have said that because she actually did have a beautiful face. But the part that chilled me is she continued and said, and when they say that, I want to mutilate my face. And there was such pain and honesty and seriousness, it absolutely blew me away. And I realized, my God, I am pretty ignorant here. And I need to learn about this. And, and the more I learn, the more pain stories like Danny's and hundreds of stories from people who have been embarrassed and shamed, it, it gets you just really angry. But I'm still real uncomfortable being around groups of people, you know, it's yes. just, I'm always wondering what they're thinking, you know, I'm always thinking they're looking at me, you know, just, they are? yeah, I know, <laughs> so I'm not crazy after all. Yeah, well, we're different, you know, yeah. we look different, and, and uh, uh, you started to do something about your, your situation when you were, what, about 565 pounds, and then what, what was the turning point for you? I'm not really sure, uh, just, I guess I got to thinking, you know, because I knew I was going to die. And uh, I just got to thinking there's too much that I want to live for, you know. There's too much I ain't done yet. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's helped me a lot. I'm, I mean, I'm more comfortable now than I was, but I still, I'm very uncomfortable and I hate myself for that.
My last question, I think, would be a society always has some sort of a beauty ideal. There yeah. is, you know, always, always, has always been. Now, unfortunately, our beauty ideal has been thin for a long, long time already. What, do you, what, should, what has to happen that that will change? The fashion now happens to be a thin body. It's as unrealistic as wanting the wasp shape of my grandmother's day or the tiny feet of the Chinese woman. It's biologically unrealistic. Similarly with sexism, just as in racism, women finally began to say, hey, wait a minute, we don't have to put up with this nonsense any longer, these double standards, and we're going to try to get into the power structure that is now you're male this kind of You're seeing this kind of movement starting, that women right. are saying, wait a minute, I mean, why do I have to starve myself exactly. all the time? Exactly. I'm not gonna accept that anymore. I see this as the last ism. We've seen the evils of racism, we've seen the evils of sexism, and now we're seeing the evils of looksism. And we're saying, it's an evil, you don't, you don't mistreat a person, discriminate against a person, make a person's life miserable because of his or her looks. I finally just said, listen, I've got to live in the body that I've got. Maybe I'll lose weight, but most likely I'll never be 110 pounds. Um, and something major changed in me when I came to that conclusion. It was really, uh, I won't put off living anymore. You know, I, I, I know recently I saw again one of these Nutra system commercials, I think, and the woman is saying, whining about, oh, I haven't worn this bathing suit in 20 years, you know, and I haven't gone to the beach. And I'm thinking, you poor sucker, look what you've missed all these years. <laughs> yeah. You've denied yourself this pleasure. Well, she conditioned, eh? How we've yes. been conditioned. I, I think the, the more that, that there is a fat subculture created, yeah. Uh, that we have uh, our own um, identity, the, the more we're, uh, we can't be oppressed. I mean, that there's an identity there. And from that, that goes into mainstream culture, says so you can't mess with me anymore. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You can't mess with me. From what I gather, your work is, is working with photos, working with image, mm -hmm. working with color, working with video, which is an area that... Uh, just sort of arouses me or have you shot any any fat uh, or, not to or date males? not to date you know again uh, this was an issue of who do I know the best uh, so I, I was photographing just women and people would ask me questions well what who are these women and why are they like they are and uh, and these are beautiful pictures and gee I never thought about fat women this way and wow these are really artistic and these women are sexy and and I never thought about that either and you know it's like I, all of a sudden people's minds were kind of revolving and in new directions my feeling has been that uh, you know if I change the mind of one person that I've I've uh, uh, you know, won the battle, and I've changed more than one mind. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, here they are, they accept themselves, we move on from here. Maybe we can do some work together. Maybe we can do some work together. That I, would be interesting. Yeah, I told yeah. conversation, yeah. <laughs> It's real important to surround yourself with fat people also. I believe that. I mean, when I, when I, 20 years I ago. I, I found one fat guy. <laughs> <laughs> Stick with him. <laughs> yeah. like, leave your wife. Come with me. Well, you know, you, you, you find little enclaves here and there, and you take it, and you just breathe in deeply, yeah. and then you know, hold your air and you can go out yeah. into that disgusting, thin world, you know. It's important to even be around people when you get all dressed up who can say, you really look nice, and you don't hear in the back of your mind for an incredibly fat woman. Yeah. You know, it's just, you look nice, you know. That's really important. I think for men, it's a very underdeveloped area, and you're probably going to be a pioneer. And that's real hard, believe me, I know. <laughs> it's real hard, and you have to be real strong. What can I expect? Nothing? Oh, no. You can expect it to, to first have some outpouring and then have it level off, and then get real slow, and then you have to keep going out, dragging out the net, and trying to pull people in and you will learn to find ways to emotionally support yourself that you never thought you could find. 
You learn to take hope out of the smallest little thing. And, um, and you become very strong. You'll be amazed. It's the most, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about my, I'm getting very emotional. I was thinking about my life the other day and I think, oh, I could have been a doctor. I could have been all these things if it wasn't for fat depression. But I would have been, I wouldn't have been a compassionate person. I would have, <clears throat> to be someone to whom things come easy, you know, I think I would have missed a lot. I think that we're so much better than most of the world. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, it's so hard for me when I see people who don't know that, who don't know how incredibly special we are and how that strength has has bonded us together and has really made us transcendent. You know? And it's it's a wonderful experience to do it and I encourage you and I support you. And it will be very lonely, very lonely. When I was 25, I, I, I had been in that house for weeks. I never could go out, you know. I, I remember one day I got all dressed up to go out and, and I was going to a concert. I felt good for the first time in months. I actually thought I looked good. And I walked a few steps out of my apartment and kids came by on bikes and screamed, hey, fat lady, hey, fat ass. And I turned around and went inside again. You know, and, and I decided that day, or shortly thereafter, that no one was ever going to have that kind of power over me again. And that I deserve to have a good life. And God damn it, I was going to do whatever it took. I was going to make whatever kind of world it, I needed to make in myself or outside to do that. And I, I did that. I took down all the artwork in my apartment that was of thin people. A lot of Urte things and Art Nouveau things. They all went. Only representations of fat people went up there. I thought a lot about the politics of Luxism, and and I came. I read some things on it. And I came to a real clear understanding of it. And I over and over and over again told myself that this is artificial. You know, Moses didn't come down off the mount and say, "Fat people, spit on them." You know, that people choose to do this, and why in the world? What sickness would it be in me to choose to subscribe to an aesthetic that showed, that showed me as not attractive? I have a choice. Yeah. I don't <clears throat> need to subscribe to that aesthetic. I can train my aesthetic just as I was trained as a child as to what's attractive and what's not. I could retrain myself. And I did that. And now I only sleep with fat lovers. It's a rough one, whatever it is. Along with heritage. Heritage and cancer rates. Heritage, isn't that a fault? No, that's paradise. I've heard of paradise. That's for sure. I'm telling you. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Sure, they weren't kidding when they said Virginia country is just beautiful. The only thing I don't like really is uh, the chairs just don't seem to fit, but the mountains are beautiful. The people are great, the hospitality is great. That's beautiful. Do you feel that you've gone either one way or the other in this struggle? What do you mean, like in terms of dieting or, or? Dieting versus acceptance or somewhere in the middle? I think that, you know, I could uh, see myself being a happy, healthy, fat person now, you know? That's where great. where I wasn't really prepared to entertain that. I was prepared to say it, but it didn't, it wasn't in here, you know? Or here. You're, here. <laughs> You're the doctor, which side is that on? <laughs> You're in the right area. <laughs> you know? I, haven't had, I haven't felt my heart for such a long time, you know? This was uh, an amazing experience. And, you know, with all these people, it's just an amazing experience. It, it was an amazing experience for you. It was, it was, you know, I don't know what it was. It, I, well, I do know what it was, you know. It's just I feel now I know what it was. Somebody listened.
you know. Somebody listen! And we'll meet two Winnipeg men who will tell us what it's like to go through life fat and what they're doing about it. All that and more coming up next on McGinnis. CJOB News reports to Winnipeg on the hour, every hour. With me in the studio this afternoon, I have two men who are starting a support group for obese men. They are Rick Zakowicz and Dr. Mo Lerner. You can talk to them on CJOB 780-6868. The lines are open for your calls. Rick, mm -hmm. you, you did the amphetamines, 13, 14 years old, courtesy of your doctor. Yes. I mean, that must have had lasting side effects. Oh yeah, you yeah. seem pretty hyper today. You're not on them anymore, are you? No, not no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it had lasting side effects because uh, I was uh, I was a depressed child, or I, I was uh, uh, depressed, suppressed. I mean, what I was subjected to uh, during my school years was was uh, uh, a lot of humiliation. Um, I I was often you know when uh, during uh, gym. When when uh, teams were picked, you would be shirts or skins, and and inevitably I would always be put on the skins team, and I had to take my shirt off, and and of course there was, you know, a lot of public laughter. Kids can uh, be cruel. Kids can be cruel, but it wasn't also it wasn't just the kids. It was also the gym teacher, who who ha uh, at one time I refused to take my shirt off because I I just didn't want to be humiliated. I was strapped for that. I was taken in and strapped and said, if you don't like the way you are, you better do something about it and stop stuffing your face. I was told by another teacher uh, a fat comment uh, that I wouldn't make good soap. What do you think of these people, and I'm going to leave out names and, and we all know who they are, but what do you think of these people who, courtesy mm. of your desire and everybody's desire to be thin, now live in 10,000 square foot houses in Beverly Hills and have Rolls Royces in their driveways. I mean, they're making millions off of this exactly, stuff. Exactly, because there is this, this, this cycle that exists out there. If you put the hope out, you know, it's like people who are terminally ill and suddenly some, there's some miracle cure in Mexico or something like that and they'll fly down and they'll do that because we're grasping. We, we've been conditioned to think that there is an answer to this. Is it exploitation? Oh, it, 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 to the worst degree, mm. to the worst degree. Like, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's endless. You know? The next question then is, uh, uh, what are the causes then? I mean, if people are not lazy, if they're not mm -hmm. overeating, what are some of the causes of obesity that, that people tend to overlook? I think there's no question that, that eating a lot is a cause of obesity. What we eat, we are. Uh, there are other causes too, though, and one of those is the metabolism factor. People, especially who are obese as youngsters, uh, their bodies learn to set a thermostat at a certain level, and they always try to maintain that level. So the people who diet extensively just end up uh, with their bodies wanting to come back to that set level. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes a, an unbelievable struggle to avoid that. Nature has provided us with this, by the way, to help us survive, or I suppose to have helped us survive centuries or millions of years ago when we were uh, foraging for food. Final thoughts, gentlemen? Or I let you go. Yeah, um, ninety-five percent of diets don't work. So for those people who are out there um, dieting, looking for the next biscuit or powder or this or that, uh, those are th that's not me talking. That's statistics talking. The the NFDA, the National Food and Drug Administration, put a request out for papers from all of these diet industries, asking for substantiating evidence that proves that their programs or their products will keep weight off after a period of two, three, and five years, and none of the research that was submitted was able to stand up. So what I'm saying is you can be overweight and you can be healthy and you can have your mind clear and, you know, uh, life is a precious thing. And, and don't, you know, don't fall into the, into the trap that has been set for us. So finally, like, you know, it's, it's an, it, it, like, no, but it's about a five-layer cake, I and I'm through same. two layers, okay. and by the third layer, okay, she's already another smoke coming out yeah, of her okay. hair, uh, ears, you know. <laughs> she got, comes to the waitress and goes, he's through with the cake, oh, <laughs> take no. away the cake, no, you know. No, 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 did she say that? Yeah. yeah. I've had that a bunch of times happen. Have you ever had that happen to you? I had in no, Safeway one time. we laughed about it, though. I mean, I did Safeway. 
Mm -hmm. I'm at Safeway. I've got, I, I, I'm looking at the pastries and I'm saying, God, I'd love to eat that, but uh, you know, like I really shouldn't. Uh, you know. And I, yeah, I will. I put it in. I had a lady come up to me in the checkout. You don't need that. Get that oh, back. Oh, you're kidding. You know, yeah, she literally took the food out of my... People you know. uh, accuse me often of having a mad look on my face. Maybe I have a smile right now, but I, I, I don't know. But I, I'm often accused of that, and I, I think people don't really cross me because of that. Yeah. They don't, you know, I'm talking to adults. What I find the most hurtful are, are, are younger people. You know, I like wearing shorts in the summertime. Yeah. I'll wear shorts right up until October so, if I can. Yeah. I don't care how, you know, it gets pretty cool. But uh, I love wearing shorts in the summertime, and uh, I'll walk by kids. And if I hear them giggling, I automatically think it's about me. Mm -hmm. And that's what I find hurtful. I was at this conference in Boston. I went to Boston. A bunch of 300 large, fat people. We went into a swimming pool together, I swear. You know how, you guys can share this with me. You know when you, you dread going into a swimming pool, you have to send your scout first. Yeah, yeah. Just make sure there's no one there, no kids and stuff. Went into this swimming pool. Hundreds of fat people all over the place having a good time. And then there's this one thin lifeguard Shaking, trembling, <laughs> and watching in please, terror. Please, please, please stop, stop, all of you know how to swim. Please, all of you know how to swim. It was nice to be around people who were warm and receptive and loving. I, I had a father who called, and, and it was a very, again, very emotional call. And, and uh, uh, he said, you know, this has plagued our family. He said, my wife has gone through operations to try to have fat removed. He said, I have dieted endlessly for the for all my life and he says now i see this uh this embodied in my daughter who who now is struggling with her weight and all of the you know all of her kids and peers have are beginning to develop figures and uh, figures and and uh she's she's still sort of very plump and he says i feel her pain he says you have to do something for children he says there's no support groups out there for kids he says and that's where it starts right there he says I can see her withdrawing I can see her pulling out of life I never had any fat role models when I was a kid see fat people just aren't respected in spite of their achievements the focus didn't seem to be on his victory or his accomplishment the focus seemed to be on his size it was a big victory, uh, and there's a little play on words there, I guess. It was his, one of there his It was a big victory, but Darren, the first paragraph, there was six shots about this guy's weight. If you include, I mean, that's the first paragraph, and you haven't even mentioned anything about his victory. You've talked about his size. Triple extra large win, uh, you know, a, a win so big it blocked out the sun, a birdie binge, cakewalk. I mean, it went on and on and on and on. And I, I take issue with, with somebody overdoing it, you know, becoming a little indulgent. You know, just the word savoring his victory. And, you know, like, no, you it's like, it's you're, got, it's you're got milk. things into it, savoring. Yeah. I would have used that in any story. I don't think so. I would have. Birdie binge, cakewalk, those, those are phrases mm. that didn't even uh, enter into the, the fat equation. They're just uh, things that I use in day-to-day -day writing. Well, he, he blew the course record away. Yeah. And, and that, to me, should have been the headline. And the headline wasn't that. The headline was extra large, triple extra large win. chairs will fit, that, uh, that the washrooms are suitable, so the term they use is fat friendly. Well, it should be as readable as a wheelchair access sign, for yeah. instance, right? That's yeah. why I think using the international symbol is really important, because we're all aware of that. Yes. So it's a good start. Yeah. yeah. And I think the but name... But all-size access, I think, has a more universal appeal. And, it and, says it better. And it says it better, and, it, and it's fair. You know, we're not asking for anything outrageous. No. You know, we just want to fit in chairs and, and, and be serviced in the same way that everybody else is serviced. Where are you going to present this logo that, well, to the conference? I yeah. mean, what sort of situation or...? It's uh, NAFA, uh, National Association to Advance Fat Acceptance. And it's in New York. I've never been to New York before. 
something else that I've learned and that is that some things in life just aren't fair life deals us some blows but you know what the way I work on things now is I ask myself is whatever bother, is bothering me right now is it gonna have a bearing on my life two years from now am I gonna look back on this moment and be sad or upset I hope not and if that's so please do as I say not as I do in spite of your grief, in spite of whatever's bugging you, get up. Get out of here. Do something. Turn the pages of a book. Take the exercise class with everyone. Go for a walk. And you can smile. You can do something positive for yourself. You know, if looking in a, in a corner of a window and I see this sign, that means I can walk through that door and I can go to the washroom. I can sit down, <laughs> I, can, uh, I can fit into all of these kinds of places. I think this is important, not only for us, but it's important for our children and our children's children, that we prepare a world for them that says, hey, you can come in here, you know? You, you, this, is, this is where you belong. It's a ticket, it's a freedom ticket, you know? Um, and if you don't have your freedom, then you don't have anything. This is about giving people different eyes, you know? When they look at us in a weird way, we should be able to go, <laughs> pop, here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You're people, you have feelings. You know?
I remember having a drink with Patricia Schwartz in Virginia, and we toasted the possibility of our working together. Well, here we are in New York. Chill down a little. You didn't know you'd be a cover kind of guy, did you? I don't know what. No, it's really, it's very loose. All oh, right, exactly what I wanted. Yeah, there's some distortion elements, so the tie is really dominant. It's like, woo, you know, like a carpet in the front of the picture. Yeah, it helps. Is it it helps, yeah. And this is Revlon, okay? So we're talking uh, 10 million. Oh, that's better. Talk about know how. Oh, that's so strong. I like it a lot. The body can catch on, like I can catch on. <laughs> I like that. Oh, you're right. Where did you come? Oh, red is definitely purple too. Very friendly. It's nice, Rick. That's great. Boy, I tell you, Rick, you look just like one of those, you know, those, uh, that you look like a salt, <laughs> you know, the potentate. <laughs> he's, he's, <laughs> he's salted, salted. <laughs> totally fresh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> But this is what I had in mind, really. I wanted to make some photos with a bevy of beautiful NAFA women, you know? So I got my wish. All right, that's perfect. That's it. Look, look at that. Divine. I think I've come from a, a form of, uh, of imprisonment and uh, although I, I'm not really sure where I'm going, I, I feel that the, that the chains are off, that now I'm walking, I'm walking with freedom, you know, and, and uh, uh, there are possibilities now that I can reach for and strive for, and, and uh, uh, I don't feel uh, held down anymore. I don't feel incomplete. I don't feel that I'm in a temporary state. I don't feel that I've got to, you know, do all of this before I'm worthy of having this and that, you know. Coming to accept who you are and realize that a lot of other people were wrong is something that you have to sort of work really hard at doing. It doesn't just come easy because you've got doctors, you've got, you know, you've got the media, you've got, you know, the press, the, all of those things are giving you this message, you know, you're not right, you're too fat, you don't fit in, you don't belong, you have to change. And all of a sudden, some people come along and change you and says, you're okay the way you are, you're okay with what you have, okay? Here's how you get well, here's how you get better, but the way you are is fine, okay? Walk through this world in that way. Walking through the garden of Eden And there were apples all over the ground Eve was standing there in this discount store Getting ready to try on a new gown Now Adam, he sat in the corner Looking down a little long in the face Then a voice from Mr. Snake said Adam, take a break, we gotta learn from our mistakes and he said this ain't no garden of eden and this ain't no orchard in the sky and if you're gonna break the rules then you better learn the blues and play them to the day that you die now when i was just a young boy 
Yes, my very first grade in school They said you stay inside the lines, boy, and never tell a lie And follow that golden rule But I ended up in the corner For rarely doing none of the above They said you bow your head and pray, boy Cause come your judgment day They won't let you into heaven above But I knew this ain't no garden of Eden This ain't no orchard in the sky Guess I like to break the rules And I love to sing the blues And I will sing them to the day that I die